At least 12 presidents are rumored to have fathered illegitimate children, from George Washington all the way to Donald Trump. And although some have been proven false, the jury's still out on most of them. George Washington allegedly fathered two out-of-wedlock children. The first was Thomas Posey. He did not know who his father was, but never claimed it was Washington. That was a creation of the late 19th century tabloid press. The second, more believable allegation was that he fathered a son named West Ford with an enslaved woman named Venus. The story goes that at some point after the Revolution, Washington visited his brother's plantation. There, he had relations with Venus, who gave birth to Ford between 1784 and 1785. Given that relations between planters and slaves were common, the story seems believable on its face. In a response to Ford's descendants, who requested information on the possible link, the Mount Vernon Ladies Association and Museum staff concluded that Washington was extremely unlikely to be the father. The association found that Washington, who carefully recorded his whereabouts, had no time to see Venus. He was busy rebuilding his business after eight years away in the field. He never visited his brother's plantation during the time frame that Ford would have been conceived, and the anti-Washington press didn't mention any rumors of it during the president's term. Venus may have visited Mount Vernon in October 1785, but that would be outside the necessary window for Washington to be the father, and that also assumes that a 1751 smallpox infection didn't leave Washington sterile. In 1902, the Scioto Gazette ran a story whose author claimed to have met a man named Eston Hemings some decades earlier. Seeing that Eston was mixed race, he asked him about his parentage, to which Hemings reportedly responded, My mother, whose name I bear, belonged to Mr. Jefferson, and she never was married. The Mr. Jefferson is President Thomas Jefferson, who is rumored to have fathered Eston, his brother Madison, and several other children with an enslaved woman named Sally Hemings, who herself was rumored to be his wife Martha Jefferson's half-sister. I just don't think that he really truly believed that all men were created equal. An Ohio newspaper article from 1873 said Madison claimed the president and his mother had a sexual relationship in France. Sally returned to America with Jefferson and returned for the promise of freedom for her children. According to the memoirs of Madison Hemings, the first child lived but a short time. She gave birth to four others, and Jefferson was the father of all of them. Hemings rarely appears in Jefferson's records, although the president noted that others thought she was attractive. On the other hand, the Scholars Commission, which studied the case, noted that the 1873 account was riddled with inconsistencies. While Jefferson's silence on Sally and his letters doesn't support the existence of an affair, a 1998 DNA study confirmed that Eston was related to the Jefferson male line, meaning that any male Jefferson could have fathered him, not just the president. Grover Cleveland, the only United States president to serve two non-consecutive terms, was ensnared in a sex scandal that nearly tanked his 1884 presidential bid. Cleveland's opponents alleged he had an affair with a widow named Maria Halpin, and they had a child. Cleveland admitted to sleeping with Halpin in 1874, but she had also slept with several of his friends, making paternity uncertain. But Cleveland stepped up and made sure the child was adopted into a good home. This, of course, was the campaign's official story. Halpin's account, published in the Chicago Tribune just four days before Election Day, contradicted it. The widow accused Cleveland of forcing himself on her, threatening her, committing her to an asylum against medical advice, and defaming her with charges of promiscuity, adding that Cleveland's attempt to pin the child's paternity on one of his friends was false. Ultimately, it seems most people believed Cleveland was indeed the father. One clergyman wrote, It may be said these stories are put in circulation for political effect, but the trouble is they cannot be refuted. Cleveland's defenders downplayed the incident as a youthful indiscretion, even though Cleveland was 40 when it happened. Regardless, Republican James Blaine's political sins carried more weight with Gilded Age Americans than Cleveland's sex scandal, and he won the White House helped by a razor-thin 2,000-vote margin of victory in New York. Warren G. Harding's reputation consisted of drinking illegal booze and playing poker, all while his advisors engaged in corruption. Add to that a rumor that he fathered his only known child with Mistress Nan Britton. Britton's affair with the president was a bit convoluted. In her own kiss-and-tell memoir, The President's Daughter, she said she fell for Harding in 1910 after finding out he was her English teacher's brother, becoming then and there a, quote, full-fledged Republican. Years later, she asked Harding, who was a senator at the time, for help finding a job. The exchange culminated in a 1917 rendezvous in the bridal chamber of New York City's Manhattan Hotel, where the affair began in earnest. Their daughter, Elizabeth, was born in 1919. This is an actual passage from his actual letters. <clears throat> Wouldn't you like to get sopping wet out on Superior, not the lake? Harding was elected president in 1920, but died in office in 1923. In an interview with the New York Times, Britain's grandson, James Blessing, said, She loved him until the day she died. When she talked about him, she would get the biggest smile on her face. She just loved this guy. He was everything. Britain was even more devastated when she realized Harding hadn't left her and Elizabeth any money in his will. Instead, Harding's family did everything it could to discredit Britain, accusing her of tarnishing his reputation for material gain.
everybody deserves to know who they are. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Blessing family, um, they knew who they were, but, they, but every, nobody else believed them. In 2015, DNA testing of Harding's relatives revealed that Blessing was in fact related to them. The only Harding Britain had ever slept with was the president, making him the only candidate for Elizabeth's father. Given President John F. Kennedy's torrid love life, including an alleged fling with Marilyn Monroe, one would have expected at least one rumor of an out-of-wedlock child to follow him. Strangely, it does not appear he ever faced any credible accusations. Only once his ex-fiancee Alicia Corning Clark died in 2016 did anyone bother to check. The socialite Clark and JFK got engaged in 1951, but canceled the wedding under pressure from his father, who reportedly didn't want a woman with Jewish heritage mixing in the Kennedy family. In 1961, Clark sued her ex, settling for $500,000, but the details were sealed. One can assume that this was done to protect now-President Kennedy from scandal. Clark married three times but remained childless. When she died, the executor of her $17.5 million estate dug up her relationship with Kennedy to make sure there was no Kennedy-Clark love child out there with a claim to her millions. Where sex was concerned, John F. Kennedy thought he was untouchable, invulnerable. The lawyer issued FOIA requests, likely for documents related to a 1977 New York Times expose on Kennedy's personal life, realizing that the sealed complaint could, in theory, hold information about a love child. But the investigation came up empty, and any allegations about an illegitimate child of JFK are considered false. Lyndon Johnson faced plenty of allegations of criminal conduct throughout his career, including rumors that he rigged his 1948 Senate race and had his sister murdered. He also kept a mistress named Madeline Brown, who claimed she'd had Lyndon Johnson's illegitimate son. In a 1987 tell-all interview with People magazine, Brown said she started sleeping with Johnson in 1948 when she was 23, after her husband was institutionalized. Johnson considered their relationship a casual affair, but Brown really loved him. In 1950, she became pregnant with her second child, reportedly by Johnson. When he found out, she said he lost it, screaming, how could you be such a dumb Dora? The child, Stephen Brown, was born in late 1950. The doctor put Brown's husband's name on the birth certificate, while Johnson, through lawyer Jerome Ragsdale, bought them a house and paid their bills. Stephen grew up suspecting Ragsdale was his father, but occasionally saw the president call on his mother. One time, Johnson put a hand on his head and told him, Son, someday you are going to be in the White House. Stephen said this was probably the closest the president ever came to acknowledging paternity. Even when he knew he was dying, Johnson refused to recognize his son, saying, Oh, I can't do that. I've got the girls to consider, and Lady Bird. Stephen filed a lawsuit against a former First Lady in 1987 for part of Johnson's estate, but it was thrown out for failure to appear. He died in 1990 of lymphatic cancer, and his paternity remains an open question. Bill Clinton's sex scandals include the Monica Lewinsky fiasco, harassment accusations from Paula Jones, and rape allegations from Juanita Broderick. There is no improper relationship and I intend to cooperate with this inquiry. Then there is his alleged encounter with Bobby Ann Williams, who claimed she had a child named Danny Williams in 1985 by the then Arkansas governor. Danny said that after his birth, Clinton sent child support payments, which he claimed mysteriously stopped in 1993, the year Clinton became president. In addition, Arkansas state troopers reportedly delivered yearly Christmas presents for the child, and these claims were reportedly verified through his mother Bobby Ann's 1993 polygraph test. I have no doubt that I am Bill Clinton's son. In 1999, DNA tests were reportedly carried out by Star Magazine that debunked the paternity claims. But Williams has argued the test wasn't precise enough. Danny further alleged that one of Clinton's friends and donors who had an interest in burying the story purposely botched the test. So the question technically remains open. Danny says he isn't interested in hush money and just wants to meet his father. His own children also want to know who their grandfather is, so he has posted a video aimed at Clinton with pictures of them. Oliver Stone's film W includes a scene in which a young George W. Bush impregnates a young woman. But this allegation, which could have in fact been a deal breaker, never made it into the 2000 or 2004 presidential campaigns. In fact, it seems made up. I'm going to define what reality is. The story's origin likely lies in Larry Flint's book Sex, Lies, and Politics. The pornographer and Clinton donor made it his mission to expose the sexual peccadilloes and moral hypocrisy of Republicans following the Clinton impeachment, and he had his eye on George W. Bush, whom he called a candidate of the sanctimonious right running on an anti-abortion platform. Flint wrote that in 2000, a lawyer representing one Susan called to tell him that his client had the bombshell material he was looking for. Susan allegedly witnessed Bush call her boyfriend in 1971, a guy identified as Clyde, in a state of panic because he had gotten one Rayette pregnant. This was before Roe v. Wade, when abortion was illegal in Texas. 
Nevertheless, according to Susan, Clyde managed to procure the girl in question what she needed. Flint was able to confirm that Bush and Rayette lived in the same apartment complex, known for raucous parties, but wasn't able to confirm the abortion with any medical professionals at the hospital where it allegedly took place. Rayette also denied the abortion, and the trail went cold. In the end, a disappointed Flint backed off the claims to avoid a lawsuit, and the claim remains firmly in the realm of hearsay. Donald Trump is the only recent president to father an out-of-wedlock child. His daughter Tiffany Trump was born in October 1993. Trump married her mother Marla Maples two months later, but Trump was hit with rumors of a second illegitimate child during his 2016 presidential run. Sometime before the 2016 election, the Associated Press reported that American Media Inc., or AMI, the parent company of the National Enquirer, had paid $30,000 to Dino Sejudin, a doorman at one of Trump's properties. Sejudin claimed to have heard a rumor that Trump had fathered a child with one of his employees. AMI wanted exclusive rights to the story. It's hot. It's pretty hot. There were different explanations given for the tabloid's actions. Dylan Howard, the Inquirer's senior editor, said he bought the rights because it was a bombshell but dropped the story because it was too thin. Other employees contradicted him, saying that they had some promising leads but higher-ups ordered them to drop it, suggesting they intended to kill the story. You're fired. In the end, Trump's rumored paramour denied the allegations and the existence of any children. 